Hey, it's 6.30, it's 6.30. Hi, Zion Lutheran and friends. We're here live Facebook again. Oops. Yeah, why don't you slide I in, I know, Rachel? like I gotta get in here. Come on in. Oh, we're live now, it says. Um, on the update on Facebook, I put there may be a few songs, but um, Jacob Sorry. isn't going to be with us tonight because I forgot that he's got one more night of confirmation via Zoom to try to finish up his confirmation. So that's what he's up to tonight. We just got done uh, doing the contemporary music for the worship service recording for this Sunday, the 21st on the 17th which we try not to get confused around here because Wednesday's the new Sunday, mm -hmm. but yet it's not Sunday, it's only Wednesday. So that's what we've been up to. So how did it go tonight singing? Stay tuned. It's a good one. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. Prodigal Son is what the topic is, the parable that we're um, uh, on to this coming Sunday. So um, that would be something maybe if you wanted to read to prepare for, Prodigal Son. And the Proud Son as well. Let's not forget about the second son. There's two sons to the story. So, uh, hi, Mary. Good to have you. Ellen and Glenda and Lisa are watching as well. Jane Prouty, how are you? Don and Eileen, good to have you. You know, we do have that big announcement coming up. That is true. That was on Facebook that we have a big announcement coming up. So we'll just wait for a little while, and I'll just keep gabbing before we share the big announcement. Tammy Schultz is watching. Hi, Tammy. Good to have you with us. Um, you know, I, I was trying to finish up my confirmation group as well. Yeah. And uh, so I've been corresponding with them and, and trying to get some answers out of them while we all gather together uh, over the computer and I was asking them some questions and I asked them uh, what was the garden where Jesus went off to pray to mm -hmm. right and there was silence and finally one of the students of mine popped in and said the olive garden <laughs> hmm. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> interesting teacher there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I made that up, by the way. Ball. That's not what one of my confirmation <laughs> students said. But we did get eighth grade confirmation done, or pretty close to done, um, mailing them packets. So that's how uh, we did it. And Jacob's doing all the technology stuff for his class. So we have, uh, oh, hi, Eddie. How are you? Good to have you with us. Arden and Linda, glad you're with us tonight. Good I'm waving. I was going to say good to see you, but I can't see you. You can see me, but I can't see you. Carol, good to have you, Carol. I hear Dutch is still in the hospital. Is this true? If you could type us an update, that would be wonderful. Um, Renee is hey, watching. Renee. Hi, Renee. Jan Wright and Penny is watching. Penny Fox, good to have you with us as well. I don't know. Uh, what, were you, oh, did no, you have just, something to say? I was just going to say that there's some superstar walkers in that list. Uh, well, maybe you want to... What do you got going on in that aspect? Ooh, in that okay, exercise okay. walking Sneak world? Sneak peek since all of you tuned in. Yeah. Um, we are... Our total this week, out of the 6,410 miles we needed to get, we are at 5,871. So we only have wow. 500... And 39 miles left to awesome. go. Awesome. Way to go, Zion. That's, that's great. That's a lot of walking. That's, that's a lot, lot of walking. exercise. That's, that's a good. lot of moving. Good. That's what we need to be doing. Maybe not today. I, I know. No, Maxine thought it was hotter yesterday than it is today because I was commenting, I think it's hotter today than yesterday, and she said, no. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is that oh, it? hi, Max. Maybe she'll tell us. Oh, now. yeah. <laughs> hi from the coffee room. <laughs> she will correct us. Okay. Hi, Donna Creighton. Good to see you. Well, yeah. I have friends here with us. Here's all my friends that I have with us today. They're all going to be so happy. They're going to be doing backflips here in a little bit. <laughs> Someone liked my monkey so much, they dropped off three other friends for us <laughs> to do backflips. So, what else you got for announcements? Okay, okay. So, 
<coughs> um, oh, baby shower update. The baby shower drive through last Sunday um, gathered 30 boxes of diapers, 13 containers of baby formula, baby clothes, and $570. Um, the items were taken to the Alpha Center um, and they are so thankful um, for that donation and the generosity of our Zion <clears throat> family. And if you missed it, you can still take things um, to the Alpha Center, but that's a huge help for some moms who really need need that. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Zion family. Michael Davis, how are you doing? By being in with a hello, well, hello to you too. Thanks for the update, uh, Carol. Um, Prayers ascending for Dutch that he will come home tomorrow. Hi, Glenda. Good. Uh, good to have you with us. We'll just keep waiting a little bit. Well, there comes Jacob right on by. Mm -hmm. Why don't you pipe in and say hi, Jacob? Now you got to go teach confirmation. Hey, there he is. There he is. You got time for one quick song? Uh, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. That's all I know. <laughs> Very good. Thank Bye, you. guys. Thank you so I'm much. For all right. I better hurry. Okay. Well, he left. He's got to go do confirmation. Um, well, I guess, I guess we can make the announcement. Are you ready for the announcement? Maybe many of you already know what the announcement might be pertaining to. But we're going to have in-person worship services starting June, Sunday, June 28th. And uh, we're excited to be coming back together again, but know that the services are modified. They're about 30 minutes in length, and it'll be um, mainly uh, communion-orientated uh, service so we can come together and you can receive the sacrament because I believe that's really a large mm -hmm. part of what people are missing. So we'll have church on Sunday the 28th at 8 and 10 o'clock, and then Monday night the 29th at 6.30, and uh, there's all kinds of communications that will be coming out. Uh, there's a letter, the plan. There's a four-phase plan you'll be receiving in the mail explaining specifically uh, what we would like you to do uh, to sign up for worship and things of that nature. So there's a lot in there. So please, please, please read it and, uh, and uh, let us uh, know if you have any questions. It's pretty simple to sign up. You'll be receiving emails and so forth for signing up. So... There's really nothing to join unless you want to join the uh, Sign Up Genius. And Rachel's going to talk about that just a little bit, right, for the yes. phone app. So yes. why don't you go ahead? Yes. So let me just... Super easy little phone app there in that top corner. And so you'll get an email. Uh, Max Singing and I played with it a little bit today. And... It's super easy. So you don't have to download the app. You can just take that email, click on the link, and then it'll take you to a screen where you put in some information. Um, so like one screen might look kind of like this once you've signed in. Um, but basically, it's super easy. So like as you can see there, um, and the when we explain more in the video, you'll yeah. more about that, but you just click in your little spot that you want you put in your name, that's your time, done. Yep, so there'll be three options that you'll see on the on the screen, whatever you use, Super your easy. computer or your phone, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or the Monday night at 6.30, and then you let us know how many people are going to be attending, and it automatically counts down. We're going to be having 75 in each service and try to maintain six-foot social distancing the best that we can, every other pew, uh, so many spots per pew, and uh, um, wearing masks, uh, they'll be provided at the door if you don't have them. Um, gosh, there's just all kinds of details that are in this plan, this piece of paper that will be coming to you with more information. I know it's backwards, I'm sorry, but more information about the sign-up genius and everything that that means right here, uh, an explanation. So we're really excited, though, that the task force, which is also the members of it are... Uh, laid out in here as well that we came up with this and that we're going to come back to church and, and give it a shot now i've heard a lot of people say everyone's back to church 
Well, I don't think everyone's back to church. And back, very few people are back to church. Uh, church. They may be having some modified services, some outdoor services, and know that this is a modified service. Right. And yeah. people that are going back to church, it looks different. Right. Just like going out anywhere else looks different, it looks different for everybody. Right. So um, it will look different. But we're going to do a video as well. And so we'll start right at the front door so you'll know what to expect when you arrive and you'll know what to expect as you get seated and you'll know what to expect as you come forward to receive the Lord's Supper. And there we have uh, completely uh, individualized cups and wafers that are uh, wrapped from a, from a company. They're pre-wrapped that come that way. So you'll be opening your own and we'll have some assistance there if you can't do that. So we've worked quite a few of the details out of, I think, and... And we'll learn as we go right. as well here, just so we can get back together. And and uh, then the, when the Lord's Supper is over, we will ask you to exit the sanctuary, and then you can visit out in the parking lot if you wish, trying to maintain that social distancing yeah. again the best that we can. So we'll just work together at it and um, fill up the services, 75 for each service. So if it's not enough, we'll add a service. If it's too much, we'll cut back. We'll it's it, It's pliable and... Um, we need to be flexible as well as we come in because I got to say, I got to say it, okay. you may not be able to sit in your favorite seat. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We'll have to fill the sanctuary from the front to the back. So when you come, be ready to sacrifice your favorite seat for a while. And then you'll see in the plan as we move on to phase three, and we don't have a date for that because we're just watching numbers and data and still looking at things that are happening, right? Right, I mean... Everything is still a fluid situation, so we just, need to watch what's happening yeah, in the community. Yeah, just over in Spirit Lake and Arnold's Park and all of that area, right. just 90 miles to the east from here, they just shut everything down again because they've had an influx of COVID-positive COVID testing. Okay. So um, that's the kind of stuff that happens, and that's the kind of stuff that the folks that are on the task force are watching and then advising us with. So uh phase three anyways then we'll go back and we'll have regular services but we'll still register for the services and have uh like 50 percent capacity in our sanctuary which in the summertime we uh, probably just a regular service then for summertime at each service so we'll have an 8 and a 10 30 we'll go back to our normal time frames again but no bible study no fellowship no donuts no coffee and no sunday schools I mean, this is just the way it is until, really, we move into phase four that we're calling it, and we're kind of back to normal operations, and then we'll start adding those other components right. back in. Right. So, um, as you can see, and this as well, that you know, we just we're we're just trying to honor each other, honor the fact that the Lord has called us to gather together so we need to start doing that again and we want we want to watch the most vulnerable about us and take care of them as well and, and be thoughtful for them so let me say this um, this is only an option the in-person modified service is only an option our main worship is still the online worship we're going to continue to record until we go into phase four so that Sunday morning online full worship service will still be available every Sunday morning until we go into phase four, which is two phases away. So who knows when that will be. So this is only an option. You are not obligated to come. And when you read the letter, I probably said that a half a dozen times in there, just so people will know that this is just an option. Our main worship service is still the online service, and it will continue on until you hear about it so uh we are ready to go we've been uh, doing a lot of lamenting about not being able to get together and being here and being the staff and the church workers and not being able to get together and so hug people touch them that's right i know, we, I know. yeah so we can now we can We're, get together and see each other and we'll move steps closer steps. to get that physical real hug we can at least see each other and and maybe do some outside visiting. And I know some of the groups are starting to gather together outside and do their social distancing. Some of the LWML groups are doing it. The youth are having fires with social distancing out here in the parking lot when it's not too windy. Um, so that's kind of the big news. I, I hope it's big for you too. 
for those that are watching, do we get any? Oh, we got Max Curland and Mary Lou Giddings and Claire Helling. How are you? Good to hear your name on Facebook. Good to have you with us. So Glenda, yep. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Um, Facebook, yep. That'll still be right. the same. Right. Everything will be exactly the same on Sunday mornings. What we're doing now, say. Yep. All the way through until we enter into phase four. Even when we're having our regular services on Sunday in phase three, we'll still record on Wednesday night. But then the services will be the same as Wednesday and Sunday. Okay? But for now, until we go into that phase, through this phase two part, um, it'll be a full service. In person, it's just a modified communion service, trying to get you out in 30 minutes mm -hmm. to reduce the exposure to each other. Churches are well known for not having a lot of air exchange, right? And it's an older building, so you get into more modern buildings, they have a better air conditioning or air system so they can turn the air over more. And so sanctuaries are known for not having good air turnover. So those are the things yeah. that we're taking into consideration too. Eric Larson, how are you? Hi to you as well. Good to have you with us. If you didn't hear, we're going to have in-person uh, in services starting January 28th, and the letter and the correspondence will be going out tomorrow in the mail, and then it'll be all over our Facebook and online, the letter and the correspondence, and we're going to make a video as well, so you all know what to expect upon arrival. So that is the big announcement. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And you might really miss my joke, too, those that are just coming on. Hi, Marissa. Hi. Yay. I miss you. Yeah, the, the my joke, I won't retell it, though. I mean, it was good. It was good. Yeah, I was just making fun of my confirmation students. And my confirmation students are top-notch. Right? Boom. Yes, they yes. Yeah. What's it? Renee Lair says June. What did I say? Did I say July? June 28th is when we're starting services. I don't know what that means, Renee. Good catch, Renee. Help me. Said. Help me. Um, I do have a couple uh, thoughts, you know, over the last few weeks. I, w I wasn't here last Wednesday. Right. Yeah, so it's been, it's been a little while, and there's a lot been going on in our crazy neck of the woods, our world, our country that we live in. Um, and... I, I got to be honest. Uh, I got to be honest with you, Rachel. I'm a little weary. I'm a little weary of all the turmoil that's going on around us, especially in our country. And 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 here's my word. I think we need to pause. Put on the brakes and pause. Pause, 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 especially from social media. Pause from the social media madness. I can get wrapped up in it myself. I can get caught up in flipping through the videos and listening to this and that and so I'm calling a pause. I'm calling a timeout for from social media madness. And here's some words that I'm thinking of. The virtue signaling, the blame shifting, the politicizing of every single thing going on. We need to pause. I'm not saying we need to stop forever in these endeavors, but we need to pause from this social media madness. Because... You know, I, I gotta I gotta be honest, I've been a little scattered lately, I've been a little emotional lately. Um, it's like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Some days you feel like you're down because you maybe watch too much or you you caught something that really got your lather up and, and, and then some days you're up high and, and nothing can touch you, but a little bit emotional, a little bit scattered over the last couple of weeks, a little weary with all the turmoil going on. So I guess I'm calling a pause. I've been trying to pause a little bit over the last week of just staying away from everything that's going on in social media, the madness. So here's something that I want to say. You and I as God's people, we need to start taking our marching orders from the Holy Spirit. Not from the latest video, not from the news story, not from the meme that catches your eye, not from the count. Uh, uh, point counterpoint as with our social media madness we just need to pause take our marching orders 
from the Holy Spirit. And how do we do this? Well, that's pretty easy, right? How do we get our marching orders from the Holy Spirit? Well, we get it from God's Word, being in God's Word. So I guess I'm asking once again, where are you in this dry season of not being able to gather together? We're soon going to, but where are you? Are you? Can you pause this madness that's going on and, and, and listen to the Holy Spirit through the reading and uh, the concentrating on God's word and his truth. Because it's it's a spiritual battle. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. It It's like it's way past the Sunday school uh, flannel graph time, right? I mean, it seems to be way <laughs> past that. This is getting to be serious, it seems. And it's a spiritual warfare being fought. And we're fighting the devil right now, big time. And we can't fight this spiritual war with our own human efforts. And I know all of you that are God's people, you know that. And we read this one a couple weeks ago, these weapons that we have to fight with. Of course, it's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. So hang on, here it comes again. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you had done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, Take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So, <clears throat> those are our weapons <clears throat> so we got Jeanette Jensen. Hope your back gets better, Jeanette. Pam Bauman. Reagan's watching. Janice Haas is watching. Hi, Janice. Yeah, we will. Uh, Jacob's event tomorrow night. We're supposed to remind you of his event tomorrow night at 7, where he's revealing his new song. So as we watch, then, as we watch this coverage on our social medias, maybe even the news, the looting, the burning, the hatred, the violence. See, that's how we're going to forget that the world is a really a spiritual battle and we're not battling one another because we get so caught up in what our eyes see in this world rather than taking that view from the mind of Christ as he sits at the right hand of the Father, which is available to you and I. So again, it's not it's not us versus them, you know, like it's, we're against, no, it's, it's us versus Satan. It's us versus him, mm -hmm. the master of darkness, man, he's smiling, isn't he? Division and anger and resentment and fear and violence, all of the things that run right into his, his territory, his category, and we focus, that's what we need to do, we need to pause and we need to refocus and then stay focused because I, I he the devil satan he wants nothing more than to bring defeat he is the one that jesus said he steals he kills and he destroys he steals he kills and he destroys those are the things that he does and it's relationships that are his main focus <clears throat> so let me remind you then micah chapter 6 verse 8 remember that verse Please refresh me. Oh, well, Thanks. how nice. I'm glad you asked, please, Rachel. Please, please. I'm so glad you asked. Who else we got here? Pastor Greg, are you taking care of yourself? You don't sound like you're well. That cough that you got? Uh, uh, part of my life. <laughs> Zion Youth. Is that like Jacob back over there at Zion? Or is that, that? Who is that? Oh, I bet you that. Is that Chez? Or is that Jacob? Um, Micah chapter six, verse eight. Thanks for your concern though. Too much talking too. 
Be strong. It must be Jan. Because Hell is in running a camera right now. So it must be Jan. Hi. <clears throat> um, Micah chapter 6 verse 8. Do justice. Love mercy. And walk humbly with your God. So we are then called to do justice on behalf of those that need it. And we're to show great passion, great compassion. We're to show mercy. We're to take this posture of humility as we seek to be the best and possible loving presence of Christ wherever we're at. So God's given us his word for the purpose of having the Holy Spirit reaffirm us and give us our marching orders if you will if you will and his word is powerful and his message is true right he's never going to speak to you something contrary to the word of god whatever the holy spirit through his word speaks to you it's truth and the truth that i want you to hear tonight is that we're not battling each other we're battling the the, the dark forces as paul said it's not against flesh and blood, it's against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil. And when we fight these lies of the evil one who wants to divide us, right, that's his greatest work, we need to use the truth of God's love. Because love destroys hate, compassion brings healing, and the Lord gives us the wisdom to use those tools of faith to stand against the enemy. And how do you get built up with those tools? Well, the marching orders, right? You got to you got to spend time in God's word to be able to be filled by the spirit to be able to use the tools as the enemy stand against you. So use the word of God. Keep speaking words of hope. Keep speaking words of healing. Um Renee bought this uh, wonderful wall hanging for our anniversary. And I wish I could. Oh, I have an. Oh, my phone's up there. I have. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> but it's words that I, I. That Pastor Greg needs to say to himself every time he leaves the house, for sure. Uh, basic words of saying, uh, see the good in other people, right? And, and forget the bad in other people. Remember forgiveness, remember love. And remember to keep your faith in God, basically. So, thank you, Renee. Very nice, Renee. Hi, Marsha. Very true. Very true. Marsha's here. Kritzmeyer. Well, I, I, I was, uh, I'd let, what time is it? Oh, it's seven. If you're just tuning in, we're going back to church June 28th. And it's a modified service for our in-person services starting June 28th. There's a correspondence coming in the mail. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be online. We're making a video to explain what to expect when you come to church on the 28th. But basically, we're holding the service to 75 people. And we'll have two services on Sunday the 28th, one at 8, one at 10, each having 75 people. And then we'll have one on Monday night as well at 6.30 p.m. with 75 people in attendance as well. So we'll see how that goes, and then we'll adjust, and we'll always keep you posted on what's going on. And uh, that's how we're going to start. We have the individual communion prepackaged cups, so no one touches them other than, well, the person that sets them out and you that open it up. And uh, we've just got all kinds of things planned for the service Uh we're we're mitigating and but not eliminating right mm -hmm. i mean that's kind of the the catch catch phrase right we're mitigating the opportunity for spread but we're not eliminating right the uh, possible spread of the covid and and other flu bugs as well you know the whole thing so we've just got all kinds of things that are happening and you'll read all about them in the plan that's coming it's a four phase plan so please 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 read it and there's specific instructions to follow to sign up for the services. And, of course, any questions, call the office and we'll guide you through. But it's very, very simple to do. And the, the reason we would like your information and know who's in the service, just in case someone would get sick in the service. So we could let everyone in right, attendance we know. To... Right. If we hear something, then we would like uh, 
not to hype people up, but just it's good, right, and salutary because we mm -hmm. want to take care of everyone in mm -hmm. the congregation, right? The most vulnerable, especially. Mm -hmm. So again, this is just an option that we're starting June 28th and June 29th for in-person right. services. The main service is still our online service. We'll continue to record that on Wednesday nights and put it out and all of the way it's been happening on on uh, Sunday mornings until we move into phase four, which is the unforeseen future. A ways down the road. We still have mm -hmm. phase three to go through before we can get to phase four, but phase four is the goal. We want to get back to normal operation, but we want to do it smartly. And working with the CDC numbers and watching the community yeah. stuff to see when we can move to the next levels. So that's a recap of what's happening. Hi, Norm. Good to have you with us. Oh. Looking at some of the comments. I, I agree with Jan there. Um, well, in the time I got left, hang on a sec. <clears throat> While he's doing that one quick announcement, um, if you are in the hospital, um, please say, and ask for your church affiliation, please say Zion Lutheran Sioux Falls. Um, we may have missed a couple of you the last couple months, and um, we're finding out from the hospitals that if you say Zion Lutheran, that could be a couple different Zion Lutherans. So Zion Lutheran Sioux Falls will get you on our list so that when we call, we know that you're in the hospital. Zion is the most used name for her church in the state of South Dakota. Really? It is, but there's oh, only true. one in Sioux Falls. So if you say Zion Lutheran Sioux Falls, boom, we'll find you. So um, we haven't had anyone in the hospital for a very long time other than Dutch. And we thought he was out, but he was back in, but he's supposed to get out tomorrow. There, telling you Dutch's medical history to <laughs> use Zion Lutheran Church. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, I wanted to share uh, Psalm 1. Just got a couple thoughts on that, and then we'll end it up. They're usually waiting for me down there at about a quarter after for me to do my part for the recording. And we don't want to keep Chad and Marianne and Hal and Greg, is the other gentleman's name, waiting, okay. do we? No, no, no. No, no, we don't. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So, Psalm 1 says that those that meditate on God's word are like trees. Like trees planted by the streams of water. Which on a day like today would be very nice, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Very hot out, it would have been good to have water nearby so trees that are well watered bear good fruit so uh friends think about this just like a tree you can't fake fruit right you can't fake fruit it only comes from a living organism that's healthy fruit and being healthy only happens when you're getting the right nourishment from the right source. Like the tree planted by next to the, to the uh, stream of water. So in this case for you and I, it's God. And it's his word. And that's how we started, right? God's word are like trees planted by the streams of water. So be like a tree planted by the stream of water. Nourish yourself with God's word so you can stand strong and bear good fruit because it seems to be a real mess out there and the mess is coming from many sides and many sources I don't care which side of the aisle you're on or what you're whatever wherever you're at it's 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 messy 
But let me say that justice and peace won't come with liking that woke post that everyone's talking about. It won't come with having a better argument, a cleverer meme, or more biting comeback on Facebook or some other medium. That just That's not how it happens. See, the, the only person who can guide our hearts and minds rightly is Jesus. So are we in step with him more than we are with the latest social or political commentary? Pause, please, and let's refocus and get away from the social commentary, the political commentary. And let's refocus and be a tree that's planted by the stream, which is God's word. Keep our eyes on Jesus. That's what we need to do. Ask him to guide our hearts. Ask him to guide our actions, to give us the words to speak when being challenged on what we may believe. But let's ask, let's ask him how to listen, too. Ask him how to serve. Ask him how to forgive. Ask him how to love, how to speak. And then stand up. And we, together as God's people, uh, we are diverse people, God's people. We are very diverse, but you know what? But we're united in the body of Christ. And let's actually do what he says. And Jesus' greatest commandment was to love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is just as good as the great as the first, and that's to love each other. And I'll add how you want to be loved or to treat each other how you would like to be treated. And that's with respect and mm -hmm. just common politeness, no matter who you are. So let me say then, let's stay focused. I love Micah 6, 8. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Our God is powerful. His message changes the world. We see that in the Bible. And we know our message is true, no matter people whether they believe it or not. Uh, it's true. So pause, refocus, and be like a tree planted next to the stream of Psalm 1. So you can be built up to use the weapons that God gives us through His Spirit to stay true in this crazy world we live in. Uh, like I said, I have to admit, I've been a little scattered. I've been a little emotional over the last couple of weeks just uh, with everything that's going on. Um, but we know, that, uh, us that are, that are in Christ, we know who's in charge and who's in control and how it's going to end no matter how it ends here on earth. Um, we have that hope. So, um, okay. Oh, Renee's trying to tell me what's what's on there. Oh, she's she's talking. Yes, I did. She's see that Renee's early. preaching. You preach, sister. Hey, Renee. <laughs> so true. So true. Any other announcements tonight? I don't think anyone I... news piped on lately to share the big announcement. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. Yeah, we have all of our friends here, though. They want to... Yeah, oh, you can't see them. Do they see us? Oh. Nope, not yet. Okay, uh, we got to show you. This is what we're... Remember I said this is what we're going to do the first time we're going to get together? So now I've got four friends, and they'll all be up there with me when we get together again. Do you want me to hold the... Sure, you can hold the phone. On here? Like, just about like yes. that. Yes. Okay, here we go. Ready? Boys with toys. <laughs> yes. Oh, these are fun. There it is. Do it. Yeah. Yay. That is what we're going to do when we're together again June 28th. We're going to do backflips with social distancing. Yes. Of course. So, uh, I guess we're going to end tonight with my friends doing flips. Thanks for tuning in with us, Facebook Live. We'll be back next Wednesday with you, and we'll be preparing to be worshiping together. So, God bless, and see you all soon. Take care, Bye. everybody.